how many of you in the audience know a woman who is educated, qualified, experienced, capable, and then stepped away from her career to take care of her family? How many of us over here? Yeah, she could be your ex-classmate, your ex-colleague, your friend, wife, sister, she could be yourself. Well, she's not the only one. I was one of them. So after I graduated from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, majoring in finance, I actually started my own educational center called Paragon. Paragon was based in Bombay, and our aim was to bring the advanced placement program from the US to India to Indian high school students. After two years of running Paragon, I got married and moved from Bombay to Bangalore, because of which I shut down Paragon and joined my husband's family business, Kemble. I worked there for five years, and Never did the thought occur to me that one day I might stop working. In fact, I worked till the ninth month of my pregnancy, and I told my colleagues that I'll be back in 40 days. I didn't even clean out my desk. And then, a baby gave birth to a mother. 40 days later, I begged off for a year more. By the time the year was over, I was a raging full-time mom. There was no way I could leave my child in the care of a nanny or a mother-in-law or sister-in-law, and I decided that just like my mother and my mother-in-law and pretty much every woman I knew, I would become a full-time stay-at-home mom. Three years later, things changed again when my second son came into the world. For the first time, I was forced to shift my attention away from my first child, and I realized that the skies didn't fall down. In fact, he became more independent, his relationship with other family members, including his father, started growing, and second time around, motherhood was also a piece of cake. Moreover, by then, a lot of frustration had seeped in. And one day I realized that if I wanted to be a happy mother, I needed to be a happy person. And for that, it meant I needed to get back to work. So I jumped back into Kemble, where I knew exactly what the need of the hour was and how I could fulfill it. And the year that followed was an eye-opener for me. Getting back to work was a very daunting, but an extremely positive experience. And not just for me, but also my children. Most definitely for my husband, and also for the company. It made me start questioning all my friends about why they weren't getting back to work. And these friends, as you can imagine, are lawyers, MBAs, architects, engineers, all ambitious, capable women who stepped away and were just not getting back. Based on their stories and experiences, I decided to found Jobs for Her in March 2015. Because I also realized then that this problem is not just mine or my friends. It's a much bigger problem. In India today, out of 100 college graduates, 40 of them are women. And that is a huge testament to the work which has been done by a mother's generation. We are literally standing on their shoulders today. But out of those 40 women, only eight pursue a career. And out of those eight, four of them drop out in three years. That means 50% of all working women in India are dropping out of the workforce in three years, amounting to about one and a half million women who are going on a career break every single year in India. And the reasons, as you can imagine, are usually personal. Marriage, motherhood, elderly care, etc., etc. When she does want to get back to work, there are lots of roadblocks in her way. Some of them are that, one, she doesn't want to go back to her old workplace because her peers have become her seniors. And take it from me, that's very difficult to digest. Also, if you've taken a longer career break, like I had for three and a half years, you feel outdated. You feel like you don't know anything anymore, and you need to bridge that gap. Third, and the largest reason of all that is stopping women from getting back is the huge loss of confidence that every woman I know on a career break goes through. Because of that, there are several challenges that companies are facing. It's easy for all of you to find fresh female talent, but where will you find the experienced ones? Companies are going through what we call the leaky talent pipeline. At the entry level, they still start with 30% women. That drops to 10% at the management level, and then 1% at the CEO level. And companies world over are now realizing that this lack of diversity is actually impacting their bottom line. Because only with diversity can you get diverse perspectives, diverse skills, diverse strengths, and those are critical for a business's success. In fact, the UNDP estimates that India's GDP can increase by 27% only if female participation matches male. So there are lots of things that companies are doing to be able to bridge this gap. 
They are hosting recruitment drives by which they are offering job openings ranging from full-time to part-time, work from home, uh, flexible time, projects, freelance opportunities. They're offering reskilling programs so that women can update themselves in these new technologies. And they're also partnering with us to have returnee internships. These are usually three to six month internships during which that woman on a career break can ramp herself up and then get absorbed as a lateral hire. Because of all these efforts comes the story of Uma Maheshwari. Uma had worked for 18 years in her career, growing from a telesales executive to the AVP at HDFC Bank. Her children were then 8 and 11 years old, and suddenly one day Uma decided she wanted to take a break. Everyone around her was shocked, and they called it career suicide, but Uma didn't care. For the next five years, Uma spent cooking, helping with homework, disciplining, and taking lots of vacations that she never got to do while she was working. Five years later, her children are now 13 and 16, and Uma again felt the urge to get back to work. So she tried what everybody does. She tried lots of traditional job portals and applied for jobs there. She even got lots of interviews, but with placement agencies. As soon as they heard about the long gap in her career, they balked, and she never heard from them again. Luckily, Uma heard about jobs for her, applied for jobs there. And in three days, she was interviewing with Kotak Mahindra Bank. 20 minutes into that interview, they offered her the role of AVP branch head of their second largest branch in Karnataka. And Uma joined them the following Monday. This is a possible story. So I want all of you to go back to that woman you know and let her know that you have found her a path back into the workforce. And if you know a company, tell them to open up their doors because this is a talent pool that cannot be ignored. Thank you.